Calabria Straudinaria. Many said it is a kite border's paradise, and looking at the events organised here, it must be true. The International Kiteboarding Association has been coming to Hang Loose Beach for well over a decade now, and the spot on Italy's southwest coast has witnessed the development of kiteboard racing over the years. Let's get it. This year, it was the Youth Worlds for riders under 21 years old, and although the extreme heat that had been torturing all of Europe was even more brutal in the south of Italy, there was glamour racing and a buzzing atmosphere as 86 riders from as far as Colombia, Cuba, New Zealand and even Tonga were jumping into action. Both Poland and France have a strong team in the girls, with France's Eloise Paguri winning the Youth Europeans earlier this year, Lisa Caval and Chloe Reveal always in the front pack. Poland's Julia Damaszewicz and Magda Wojciechowska only got second and third, with the 2022 Youth World Champion Nina Artsiz further down the scoreboard, and there was a feeling of unfinished business. Pretty sure that I made a lot of mistakes that they took my uh, took the bullet away from away from me, and uh, hopefully this time that's not not gonna happen. No more mistakes. Um, I'm gonna be really focused on my racing and uh, hope I'm gonna make it the best possible. I feel very well prepared for this competition and I'm pretty confident about my performance here. I hope it's going to be really good and uh, I hope that I will be able to show what I got because I think I got a lot. I think Desiree will deliver wins every day so I'm just planning to do good from the beginning and then show what I can do in, in the finals. I was really upset after the last event because I practically had the win in my pocket. I did one mistake on the second lap. I know what I did wrong and this time I just won't be doing those mistakes and I hope that will bring me a good place. A Youth Worlds is where new faces appear and where progress is clearly visible. With surprise appearances from Argentinian rider Catalina Torrienzo, French riders Lisa Caval and Chloe Reveal, and Turkish rider Darren Atakan, we've had some exciting switch-ups with new faces at the top. After less than two years of kite foiling, Argentina's Catalina Torrenzo has started to appear in the front pack. It's super cool when hard work pays off. I mean, it's like all you're working for just like clicks and I'm super, super happy. I hope to continue improving and yeah, I'm pushing myself. It makes me feel free and alive and it's amazing. And I really want to like, I don't know, improve and be better and have fun. That, that's what matters. So yeah, the girls are going so good. They're pushing so hard. We are super close out there and I'm super happy to be racing with them. Catalina was joined by a highly promising new generation of kite foilers appearing from the Americas, including Brazil's Lucas Fonseca, Marcos Rodriguez and Vito Filio, Colombian riders Mari Prevo and Jean-Paul Velegas, as well as Adriano Castro Ortiz, representing Cuba for the first time ever in Formula Kite. Coming from that far to compete puts an extra challenge that the South American riders need to face but that makes them stronger and better. I'm feeling confident, feeling fast. I trained a lot. I did a, a good preparation out of the water, on the water. So 
So yeah, I'm feeling comfortable, feeling prepared and feeling that I have a good level for this event. I think this is the most important thing. We're really far from home, we're really far from our family, from our friends, our culture. So we always miss this a lot, but I think that when you have a dream, when you want something, you need to, to lose something so lose something so you get new ones. We we do like our new family here. I have a lot of friends that they're like almost my brother, so we have the bad things but we have a lot of good things too. The Asian boys were on fire right from the start with Singaporean Max Meda and China's Cuban Huang dominating their respective heats. Having known each other since they were both 10 years old in 2016, the two are not just rivals but long-time friends and have grown and matured within the sport. With the boys' fleet being split into heats, expectation was high for the day that the two would meet when the fleet was split into gold and silver. It was Maida that came out on top, but Huang didn't seem to hold hard feelings. During the World Championship, uh, it's always a very fun championship when you have the top rider racing with you together. But what's different is, it's very clean racing. You have all, only three of you guys are fighting together. You know, you're not looking at everyone, but focusing fully on your skill and the speed to see what you can do, what you can push in the maximum. When you're thinking these are the same age as you guys, this is nothing about political, nothing about the score you're fighting, but just the pure racing, the pure enjoyment you're doing. And, you know, in a racing course, we're competitors, but after that, it's a really good feeling when your friends talking together. Behind the two who qualified directly into the medal series, a fierce competition is going on for the places in the semi-finals, with various faces getting in the lead. Uh, Toro Grande Youth Europeans, and as well the year before that. So um, it's really going to be it's going to be a great time to see if I can push it to finally make it to my first medal series. I'm just going to have to see how much further I can push how much more speed I can get out of each tack, each jibe, just to get to that top 10. The exact opposite scenario played out at the top of the women's fleet, where everything was open till the last race. An outstanding performance by Lisa Caval from France gave her two match points going into the final, while early leader Magdalena Wojciechowska joined her in the final with one match point. It wasn't meant to be for the final, but the semi-finals were sailed and the battles were nail-biting. Unfortunately, the always reliable Gisaria Seabreeze decided to take a break on the last day, making it impossible to complete the women's final, and Lisa Caval from France won her first major title without sailing on the final day. Poland's Magda Wojciechowska had to settle with the silver. It was a super great week. Uh, it's a, like, I'm, I'm not used to win race, so it was a bit uh, a surprise for me to arrive to win uh, as many races as I won. It was uh, really hard because uh, all the girls pushed really hard, and we are uh, a really close level to each other. So every race was a surprise who is going to win, who is going to be in front. It was almost boring in the boys' medal race, where Italian Riccardo Pianossi and Brazil's Lucas Fonseca won the one race that they needed to win and progress into the final. It then took one more race for Mida to seal the deal, with China's Quinban Huang getting silver and youth European champion Pianossi winning the bronze medal. How is it, man? It is, it is overwhelmingly positive. I mean, I cannot say it in just a few sentences, but I tell you, it is magnificent, yeah. A lot of other people have put in a lot of effort as well, and I was just lucky that I could get a head start in front of everyone. Um, but they have really caught up a lot, and the level is so high now. It makes it really worth it to come here and compare yourself against everyone else and see where you stand, because it's so competitive right now. Going away from Italy, I'll be learning my lesson about staying mentally focused all the time and keeping that laser focus no matter what the situation and never giving up. 
It was a hot, action-packed event, under the extreme heat, and the kids were on fire. There were new faces from all over the world and blazing performances. With such a strong level across the fleet, many of the riders can't wait to see what they can do on the world stage, battling with the best in The Hague next month. Watch out world, a new generation of kite foilers are coming.